know, Mars is the closest place that we can reach with robotic exploration that we think had a really good chance of having ancient life. The Perseverance rover will land at a location called Jezero Crater. Jezero Crater is a very interesting place. It's a crater that once held a lake. There are a lot of craters on the surface of Mars that could have once hosted ancient lakes, but not every crater that we think had a lake actually preserves evidence that that lake was there. It had an inflow channel and it had an outflow channel. That means it was filled, the crater was filled with water. In Jezero, we have probably one of the most beautifully preserved delta deposits on Mars in that crater. This is a wonderful place to live for microorganisms, and it is also a wonderful place for those microorganisms to be preserved so that we can find them now so many billions of years later. There is no other place on Mars that has the unique combination of a lake setting, a beautifully preserved delta, and the diverse mineralogy that we have in Jezero Crater. So it's truly a special landing site. The major goal of the Perseverance mission is to investigate astrobiology on Mars, and in particular, to address the question of whether life ever existed on Mars. The Perseverance rover starts with a design that's very similar to Curiosity. We've added to it a whole new set of science instruments, and these science instruments were purposefully selected to help us in the search for biosignatures. We're gonna be taking uh, microphones with us for the first time we're going to have uh, that human sense on another planet. Perseverance carries with her a grand experiment in space-faring technology, a helicopter, the name of which is now Ingenuity. One of the major upgrades that Perseverance has from Curiosity is that it's able to self-drive for a distance of up to 200 meters per day. As the rover is driving, it's literally building the map of the road it's driving on on Mars. Scientists for years have told us that to really unlock the secrets of Mars, we have to bring samples from Mars back to Earth. So what Mars 2020 is going to do is to drill samples, put them in small tubes. We're going to seal it in its own individual tube. We set them on the surface to provide a target for the second two missions which hopefully will get in development in the next several years and could potentially get the samples back to Earth by 2031. Perseverance is a very, very profound first step in both our understanding of our place in the universe and a stepping stone towards human exploration on Mars. When the pandemic struck, the future was certainly unknown. It was like walking into a blind, dark alley. You didn't know what was there, what was in front of you, what you were going to have to deal with. It's something that nobody expected. It's something that nobody could plan for. So we all were asked to start working from home. Rather than your first priority being mission success and, and getting to the launch pad, your first priority immediately gets displaced, and it's now the safety of the people. And it took a lot of work to put stuff together in order to keep momentum going, to keep people working safely, keep them healthy, and to keep the project uh, on schedule. We called the effort Mars 2020 Safe at Work, and the objective was uh, to keep the team as safe or safer than they would be if they were not working. You know, putting a spacecraft together that's going to Mars and not making a mistake, it's hard no matter what. Uh, trying to do it during the middle of a pandemic, it's it's a lot harder. And liftoff. As the countdown to Mars continues, the perseverance of humanity launching the next generation of robotic explorers to the red planet. Certainly uh, never done something like this before, trying to lead a team that's flying a spacecraft on the way to Mars while getting ready for landing, while doing it all from home. There's no doubt that working in isolation not virtual isolation, but in physical isolation from everyone else, is a challenge. We had to rethink and redesign what it meant to operate a spacecraft in flight when we couldn't all be in the same room in mission control, seeing the data come down from Perseverance. It was, it was a major change going to that, you know, looking at everyone on a screen instead of in person. Because of the pandemic, you can't uh, you know, just pop over your cubicle wall and talk to the person next to you. It's definitely been a challenge to figure out how to communicate and uh, get everything done remotely, um, but we've managed to make it work. We are explorers. 
Our job is to go into the unknown, and this is just another example of the unknown. We're really doing something that's transformative in trying to understand whether or not life evolved on another planet. That's the fundamental objective of this mission. We're all still connected by this incredible mission and this, um, this wonderful team that we have the opportunity to be a part of, so that keeps at least me going. Pretty much everybody that I've talked to that's associated with the mission has, has said the same thing, which is you could not have come up with a better name than Perseverance. It's an amazing serendipity that we get to persevere through working on Perseverance. The communications infrastructure supporting Perseverance's landing is quite complex. We've rallied a truly global network of relay and communications assets to help us capture and record those precious minutes of entry, descent, and landing, or EDL. We receive a stream of engineering telemetry via these communication assets that helps us see and understand exactly what's happening. Perseverance sends direct-to-earth X-band tones, each of which provides us with indications of critical entry, descent, and landing events. During entry, descent, and landing, we have two Mars orbiters listening for the ultra-high frequency, or UHF, signals from Perseverance. These orbiters relay these signals to deep space network stations on Earth, Madrid in Spain, and Goldstone in California. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, or MRO, has reconfigured its software to perform a type of relay called bent pipe. This will provide us with near real-time telemetry during entry, descent, and landing. We have coverage from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter from just before entry to a few minutes after landing. The telemetry we receive will be delayed by the time it takes light to travel from Mars to us back on Earth. Additionally, the Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution spacecraft, or MAVEN, is recording these UHF signals and will be relaying that recording hours after landing. MAVEN will be covering us from around the time of cruise stage separation until a few minutes after landing. We also receive what we call heartbeat tones, which are indications that the spacecraft is alive and progressing throughout entry, descent, and landing. It's important to note that while unexpected, we could lose our communication links and still land safely. Because Perseverance is doing entry, descent, and landing completely autonomously, she doesn't need our help to joystick the landing. The communication links give us added visibility. Nothing can be taken for granted when you get to Mars. There's a lot of things we just don't know. Space always has a way of throwing us curveballs and surprising us. I mean, until we get the data that says we're on the ground safely, I'm going to be worried that we're not going to make it. Entry, descent, and landing is often referred to as the seven minutes of terror because it takes about seven minutes to get from the top of the atmosphere of Mars to the ground safely. The spacecraft has to do all of this by itself. There are many things that have to go right to get perseverance onto the ground safely. There's a lot counting on this. This is the first leg of our sample return relay race. There's a lot of work on the line. Starting about 10 minutes before atmosphere entry, we get rid of really the spacecraft part of, of the rover that's been supporting us. We come screaming in to the Martian atmosphere at 12 to 13,000 miles per hour. And the heat shield is what dissipates all that initial energy through friction. The vehicle will continue actually flying itself through the atmosphere. It's sort of like a transforming vehicle that went from a spacecraft and now it's kind of like an aircraft actively guiding itself. When we're going slow enough, we deploy a parachute. It's the biggest supersonic parachute we've ever sent to another planet. It's critical for slowing down the vehicle. Perseverance's entry, descent, and landing borrows heavily from that of Curiosity. But fundamentally, Perseverance is a different rover. She's bigger, she has different instruments. We've added a lot of smarts on the inside to make it more capable so that it can deal with the landing site that we've given. The science team identified Jezero Crater as basically an ancient lake bed and one of the most promising places to look for evidence of ancient microbial life and to collect samples for future return to Earth. Uh, the problem is it's a much more hazardous place to land. When you look at Jezero, all you see is danger. How do we go to a site that we never thought was safe enough to go to before? So the heat shield, which has protected us all the way through entry, is no longer necessary. We need to get that off so that we can actually see the ground. And we can see the ground in a couple different ways. 
Perseverance will be the first mission to use terrain relative navigation. So while it's descending on the parachute, it will actually be taking images of the surface of Mars and determining where to go based on what it sees. This is finally like landing with your eyes open. Having this new technology really allows Perseverance to land in much more challenging terrain than Curiosity or any previous Mars mission could. Amongst the rocks and the craters and the cliffs, these things are hazardous to the rover, but these are the things that are interesting to the scientists. Once Perseverance has figured out where she is, jettison the back shell and parachute and light up our rockets. Those rockets help us steer to a safe landing spot that's nearby. That descent stage takes us all the way down to about 20 meters off the ground. That's when we start the sky canyon. Once the rover has hit the ground, the descent stage will cut loose from the rover and fly away to a safe distance. But surviving that seven minutes is really just the beginning for Perseverance. Its job, right, being the first leg of sample return to go look for those signs of past life on Mars. All that can't start until we get Perseverance safely to the ground. And then that's when the real mission begins.